Welcome to episode number 21, Around the World in 80 Tangos. Today we have a piece of Francesco Canaro, La Morocha, and the singer is Ada Falcon. We will come later to her. This is a recording of 1929. It was the first recording ever of a dance orchestra with a female singer and the first collaboration of Francesco Canaro and Ada Falcon. The composer of the piece is Enrique Saborido, a very interesting guy. He was a piano player and a violin player. He performed with both instruments, did a lot of tango, and he also opened a tango school in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, in 1918. It is said that La Morocha is the first tango for export, because when the partitura, the score, was published in 1905, the next year, 1906, 1,000 uh, copies of this uh, sheet music came to Europe. So it was the first exportation of a real Argentine tango to Europe. And the title was different before. Uh, yes. <laughs> so they say that Sabolido used an old melody he had on another occasion. The original title was Metele Fiero Hasta el Fondo. And now I ask the underage to close, close the ears. ears. It's something like put the iron on the bottom. We don't want to talk about this yes. now. Andre Vijoldo uh, has written the text. Yes, Andre Vijoldo, also a very famous guy from the early times of tango, did the lyrics. And it was the time, 1905, when Argentina started to become a nation. The title is La Morocha, La Brunette. So they said there's this uh, story that Argentinian women after this song came out uh, colored the hair in black, <laughs> right? Yes, the, um, the lyric is, is a sort of, uh, that uh, Vijoldo tries to create a pattern or like a, a form how a, an Argentinian woman and a couple should be like. 1905 was an interesting period in Argentine history. It was at the end of the big immigration history of Argentina. At the end of the immigration period, Buenos Aires had uh, 10 times more inhabitants than in 1880. So it was quite a big change in society. And one of the main issues in this time was the, to form an Argentine identity. There is this saying that Argentines are Italians who speak Spanish who would love to be French, especially from Paris, and whose land belongs to the English. Why the land belongs to the English? Because England and Argentina had close relationships. For example, there was a lot of English capital going into Argentina to, for the dredging of the port of Buenos Aires and for uh, funding agricultural products. It is an example of globalization already when the English tried to use Argentina and other countries for agricultural products to import them to England. Whereas in the second half of 19th century, they diminished the production of wheat by two thirds. Wow. So they wanted to have ready-made products. They wanted to have the profitable in in industry in England and the production of uh, simple products they want to have in other countries. I'm the brunette, the most chic, the most famed of this people. I'm the one who at dawn gives into the countryman a straight matter. I, with sweet emphasis, at my little range, sing a stylish tune with tender passion while my husband sets off a trot on his mustang. I'm the brunette from Argentina, the one who doesn't feel regret and sails across life with a smile in her songs. I'm a gentle companion to the noble Creole gaucho. I'm the one who saves her care for her master. On my beloved ranch under the pergola in a silvery night, with tender feelings, I sing for the pampa wind, for my beloved country and my true love. 
Yo soy la brocha, la más agraciada, la más renombrada de esta población. Voy a quedar paisano, muy de madrugada, muy de madrugada. Ada Falcon, the singer of this, uh, I don't know, is it really lyrical? I mean, it's uh, creating what you say, it's creating this idea of we are a nation and... And it creates a, a pattern, how a marriage on the countryside should look like. Yeah. It's an Master. illusion, it, it never it never <laughs> existed like that, it's, it's just something, a fantasy. But Ada Falcon, beautiful woman, great voice and she started very very early her career she was a bit like the shirley temple of argentina her mother wanted her to be a star so she was she never went to school she always had always had homeschooling if so i don't know and when she was five she was for the first time on stage of a theater and when she was 11 she was taking part in a movie And then she came to tango, first with Osvaldo Frosido, but... Yeah, it was only a... Uh, she only was working as an estribigista, so she was only singing the refrain of the song in 1925. 1929, she met Francesco Canaro. And this recording is the first collaboration of them. And this is the first time when a female singer is part of a dance orchestra, not only as a refrain singer, but a complete singer. Mm -hmm. And now is the story is coming. The love story. The, the well dramatic <laughs> love story. Well story. So the, their, their collaboration lasted 10 years. They recorded around 200 numbers. And uh, it was an on and off relationship. And of course, Many things happened, and after a while, Ada Falcon was fed up, and she asked Francesco Canado, who was married, of course, that he should get divorced. And he asked his uh, advocate about the costs, about the risk of this operation, and he informed him that it would cost him the half of his property. And as Canaro came from a very poor background, very poor family, He was always afraid to lose money, although he was a really generous person. He supported everybody and spent a lot of money for his family and, and so, and friends. But this was too much. And so this, um, the topic of uh, divorce or something like this was never on the table again. But they continued with the relationship. Until? Until one day, La Francesca, the real wife of Canaro, as she was named, she entered the rehearsal room where uh, Ada Falcon was sitting on the lap of Francisco and she was uh, putting a gun out of her, her pocket and threatened to kill Ada and that was too much. So they decided to stop the collaboration and the relationship and in 1942 Ada Falcon disappeared from the public. First she went to exile to Cordoba And later she retired, together with her mother, into a Franciscan uh, monastery, which is very unique because she left Francisco to get a Franciscan mm. nun. So that is it. And there, there she spent, it's unbelievable, 60 years until her death in 2002. More than a half of her life. What a sad story. Yes. And with this sad story, This was the 21st episode of Around the World in 80 Tangos. Today we had La Morocha. Orchestra Francisco Canaro, recording of 1929. The music was written by Enrique Saborido, the lyrics Angel Vijoldo. And on the microphone, Ada Falcon. Thank you for traveling with us through Tangos We Love and we hope you enjoyed. Daniela and Raimund, Tango Mundo, Berlin. Take care, stay easy. Bye bye.